Well, hello everyone. Uh, Hi lovely, everyone. <laughs> lovely welcome to you from Bob. And from Mary. And it's Bright River Chapel from the northeast of England today, Sunday, the 26th of June, in the year of our Lord. 2022. That's a relief, isn't it? We haven't ended <laughs> up in 1922. I think we've said that before now. <laughs> So uh, it's really nice to have with us today. I'll just unspotlight us um, it's, and get on the gallery just so that we can have. Uh, really nice to have with us. Um, Kirsty is our guest speaker. Hello. And um, Ben and Rachel. Rachel. So just hi, say hello, please, <laughs> and where you're from, Ben and Rachel. So we're from no, um... In Northumberland, Great. lovely to have you Great. with us. Yeah, you've been <laughs> yeah. good, good pals to us, you two, um, uh, since we moved up into this area five years ago. And um, Kirsty, just tell us a little bit about where you're from. I know you'll be speaking shortly, but yes, yeah, so I am living up on the Isle of Lewis in Scotland, which is in the Outer Hebrides. Um, we've known each other for a good few years, haven't we, Bob and Mary? Yeah, but we sure met know. actually in Leicester. At a conference yes, in Leicester. That's I've it. had the privilege of hosting you in my house here. Yeah. And so a good long relationship there, and yeah. it's lovely to be a part of what you're doing. Well, everyone gets excited as soon as you say the Thank word you. Isle of Lewis in the Outer Hebrides. Oh, yeah. they, they either get excited because <laughs> they just love the romanticism <laughs> of, of the outer outer of the British Isles and get all yeah. gooey eyed, or they suddenly get gooey eyed because of the revival history of of Lewis and some of those other islands and um, it's really lovely to have you with us so we'll 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 we're gonna have a, a normal a brief time of, of worship and, sh and sharing together but especially we're having Kirsty on as well to share today so we're gonna Thanks sing Jesus be the center yes. um, if you don't know the words then uh, I'm sure you'll pick them up soon Ah, one more technical thing to do. Okay. It's a really good song to just to get us to focus on who is the centre of our lives. And uh, we, we've it's always important to draw near to Jesus to just to give him your heart. And uh, I love the chorus of this, be the fire in my heart. Be the wind in these sails, be the reason that I live. Jesus, mm. Jesus. Jesus, be the centre, be my source, be my light. Jesus, Jesus, be the centre. Be my hope, be my song, Jesus. Be the fire in my heart, be the wind in these sails, be the reason that I live, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, be my vision. Be my path, be my guide, Jesus. Be my hope, be my song. Jesus, be the centre. Be my hope, be my song, Jesus. Be the fire in my heart, be the Be the reason that I live, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, be the centre, be my source, be my light, Jesus. Jesus, be the centre. My song, Jesus. Be the fire in my heart, be the wind in these 
saints be the reason that I live, Jesus, Jesus. Be the fire in my heart, be the wind in these sails, be the reason that I live, Jesus, Jesus. So Father, we want you to be with us in our daily lives, Lord Jesus, we want you to be the centre of our lives, of our head. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh each day. Set our hearts on fire for you. Walking with you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Don't let my love grow cold. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm calling out like the fire again. Don't let my vision die. I'm calling out like the fire again. You know my heart, my deeds, I'm calling out, light the fire again, I need your discipline, I'm calling out, light the fire again. It's to buy gold, refining the fire. Naked and poor, wretched and blind, I come. Clothe me in white, so I won't be ashamed. Lord, light the fire again. La da da da, la da da da. Lord, light the fire again. La da da da. La da da da. Lord, light the fire again. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm calling out. Light the fire again. Don't let my vision die. I'm calling out, light the fire again. You know my heart, my deeds. I'm calling out, light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm calling out, light the fire again. I am here to buy gold, refining the fire. Naked and poor, wretched and blind, I come. Clothe me in white, so I won't be. Ashamed. Lord, light the fire again. Lord, light the fire again. Oh, Lord, light the fire again. La 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 la. La 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 la. Lord, light the fire again. La 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 la. La 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 la. the fire again well Rachel if you can unmute and uh, pray for Kirsty as she comes on to share with us um, some something today thank you thank you Rachel
Thank you, Rachel. The, the, the technical wasn't too good on that, so I don't know how it will come out um, live today, but um, I'm sure the Holy Spirit has used those words. Yeah, thank Praise you. The Lord. Thank you for praying. Yeah. yeah. And um, Kirsty, over to you then now. Yes, thank you very much. So it's, it is my honour to get to share this with you today. I'm so excited. Um, what's on my heart to share is a word that the Lord actually gave me. A couple of weeks ago now I was meditating on some of the events that were happening mm. locally to the church and um, just heard the Lord say it's time to mend your nets you need to mend your nets mm. um, which of course gets you thinking doesn't it it gets you wondering and pondering and meditating on a word like that it's always good to go back to him with these words that we hear just to say oh is there more to understand than this Anyway, I had a, a short message there that I felt to share with a few people, including Bob and Mary and the Welcome Team Network. So I found it correlated with some of the things that you guys have been praying about and also found a correlation with another group as well. And it's just wonderful how the Holy Spirit knits these things together for us. So I'll share some of that with us today and I pray that you'll be blessed by it. Mm. So I had the sense that we need to mend our nets and I heard it's not the brand new unused nets that need mending, it's the well used nets that need maintenance. Right before the catch Jesus instructed the, the disciples to make, they were mending their nets. I sense that the Lord was speaking to us to get ready for the harvest, for the catch, by mending, healing, restoring our nets. Nets to me speak of networks, relationships, and the structure for the catch. I believe that the emphasis in this is on receiving ministry and ministering to one another so we're healthy and whole and ready for the harvest. One of these other groups um, that I shared this with, um, one of the members got back in touch with me with a quote from a book by Rick Joyner called The Harvest, and this book was written in 1989, so I was a year old at, at most, which is quite good, um, which has just told everybody my age, so you're all welcome. I know I look so much younger. <laughs> anyway, so the quote read like this, um, for the coming harvest, the Lord is preparing a great spiritual fish net, which will be able to hold the catch that is coming. The net is formed by the linking together of his people, the strength of this net will be determined by the strength of the interrelationships and intercommunication of his people. So again, it's this, this message of we need each other and we need this network in order to be ready to bring people in to the kingdom, to introduce them to Jesus, to see them discipled, to see them uh, built up and encouraged and fully equipped for the work that he's called us to do. So I want to take this back to the scripture, a couple of scriptures really to look at. The first one is Luke chapter 5. I'll read a few verses from there. And then we'll have a look at John chapter 21 later. So if you have got your Bibles, you can find those. But I'll read it clearly enough, I hope, for you to follow along. So in Luke chapter 5 and verses 1 to 11, it says this. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and talked to the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. 
And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they had, and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and who were, all were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. So it's interesting in this passage, Jesus goes and he uh, meets these guys with the boats and he's utilizing the boat really as a platform to speak. And then he tells them, you know, let's go and catch some fish. And I can just imagine Simon's like, oh, all right, okay, if you say so. <laughs> you know, this sarcasm, this kind of derision of like, I'm a fisherman, I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Who are you to come along, teacher, and tell me what to do? Um, <laughs> but here it says that they were washing their nets. Um, in another couple of, um, of the Gospels, it talks about when Jesus called them, the sons of Zebedee were there mending their nets. And the word mending is really interesting in the Greek because it means to mend and repair, but it means to furnish completely. It means to complete, it means to equip, it means to prepare. And elsewhere, the same word is translated as fully trained or perfected or equipped. And actually in Ephesians chapter five, when it's talking about the building up the saints for the work of ministry, the equipping there is the same root word. So this repair and mend and restoring is the same kind of word that's used in this body ministry of where we're getting around each other and equipping each other and building and restoring and repairing. So again, it's just beautiful how these things link together, isn't it? So the root for the word equipping is in, used in Ephesians chapter four. And the Lord gave some as apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers for the equipping, equipping, the mending, the restoring, the repairing, the making perfect, the completing of the saints. So we need a network to make the net work. Really like that. I, I like the Lord, how he uses puns. I love a pun. <laughs> and all through the word, a lot of the prophetic words that the Lord speaks, especially to the likes of um, Jeremiah, I think it is, in the Old Testament, he used puns. So I do like that. We need a network to make the net work. So we need to be equipped. We need to be prepared. We need to be trained, even mended and repaired so that we're fully functional, so that we're able to carry out this work of ministry, so that we can fulfill our function as children of the Most High God, as a part of his kingdom business, as a part of this network for the catch, for people to come into the body of Christ, to then in turn get built up and restored and repaired and ready and equipped and fully able to be about the same business that Jesus was in. This happened, this event happened at the very initial part of Jesus' relationship with these disciples. Is that remarkable? It was this, imagine if that was your introduction to Jesus, you know, <laughs> suddenly you, you've got all your needs met, <laughs> your boat is completely full, everything that you could possibly need, um, you, all the things that weren't really working for you well beforehand start to work because of this brand new relationship that you've got with him. What does that sound like? That sounds like salvation to me. I don't know how many of us were struggling in things before, even if we've been saved a long time, even if we've known the Lord, how many of us kind of do the slog and get on with the stuff and try and get things to work for us, but then uh, all it takes is a uh, moment to speak to Jesus, to speak to the Lord, and to invite him into the situation, to hear an instruction, to act on it, to 
hear that word, to even trust him, to trust him with our work, our relationships, our friendships, so that he can bless us. And it's always more than enough. It's always so much more than we could think. Simon was not prepared <laughs> for that catch. He wasn't. But what happened? He had to get the other guys to come and help him, didn't he? He needed a network. He needed to call the other fishing boats to come and help him scoop in this net full of fish. He needed these relationships all about him in order for him to function in the work that the Lord had called him to. And then Jesus invites them to come follow him and become fishers of men. And in the same way, they were invited as a team to be about this business, to be fishermen of men, they needed to be a team. It wasn't individuals, it wasn't line fishing. It wasn't competition fishing. It wasn't reeling in the biggest catch you can get so you could show off this beautiful catch and go, I've got the biggest or the most, I don't know, I know nothing about fishing. But <laughs> I think fishing, if you're gonna fish it, you should be reeling it in to cook it. Otherwise, anyway, <laughs> that's a bad advice. But if we want to see harvest the same way as the Lord's commissioned us to see harvest, we need a team. We need this network. We need these strong relationships, just like what I read from Rick Joyner. They spent the next three years then learning what this fishing looks like. It was, it was remarkable all the different means of catching fish. You know, Jesus would heal some, he'd preach parables to another, he'd take the law apart in, in front of another crowd of people. And this was all the tools and all the skills and all the networks that were needed to catch the fish. The Lord's put some in the body to, for some function, some in the body for another function. Everyone with a little piece of the jigsaw, a little piece of something that they can bring. My bait is going to catch a different fish to your bait. <laughs> We've all got something different. Some people, the, the bait on our line or the, or the bait in our net is going to, the thing that they go for is going to be the acts of service that we go about doing. Somebody else, it's going to be a word that we speak that's a word in season. It's a word that goes right to the heart of somebody. Someone's going to be caught because of the love that's demonstrated to them. That's unconditional, that they can't understand because they don't deserve it. There's so much that he has equipped us with as a body, but we need the network to make the network. If we want the volume of catch, if we want to see the harvest coming in, we've got to be mindful that it's not about me. It's not about me as an individual, but it's about the body of Christ functioning. Even in our different denominations, our different churches, our different pockets of Christians, pockets of groups, the Lord wants us to be working as part of his body, according to his pattern. They were part of the team with Jesus. If you know Jesus, you're a part of the team with Jesus. Isn't that so cool? <laughs> that is brilliant. We're a part of a team with Jesus. So, you know, even if I'm lacking <laughs> or you're lacking, maybe if Bob and Mary are lacking, well, Jesus has done everything and he's all sufficient. He's not lacking in any way, shape or form. So we've got the best team player on the team and he's just looking for our partnership. He's just looking for us to come and join in. So the disciples, you can imagine, they're having this wonderful time of being fishers and men and going about with Jesus and seeing how this is all working. And you can imagine the teamwork, this core group, the team that's going on, the relationships that are being built, even some of the tensions maybe where those relationships just get stretched a little bit. Maybe, maybe John didn't like the way that Peter said such and such, or maybe Peter didn't think that... Uh, Matthew was the brightest tool, <laughs> the sharpest tool in the <laughs> toolbox. So, you know, there's all kinds of frictions when we're together in team, but it's more than just a team, isn't it? 
it's family. We're, we're blood, we're together. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We are knitted together as a part of this fully functional body. We're as tight as tight can be. And it takes a lot to break those relationships. And these relationships were really put to test when Jesus died. The discipleships, they, the, the disciples, they, they scattered a wee bit. But after Jesus rose again, he started to meet with them in various places. So I'm going to take us to John chapter 21 now. And I'll say this, I, I, I loved looking through these things in the last couple of weeks because I've had to jump over each of the Gospels in order to get a full story. So even there, we need a team. We need a team for a full picture. We need a team of this network of Gospels to get a full story of how this looked. So John in chapter 21, and a few verses here. So starting at verse one, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we're going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered to him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and he plunged into the sea. But the disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net of fish. So here we are after Jesus has died, he's risen again, he's meeting all these disciples and he meets, appears to them on another bit of water, different bit of water, but here's a, a very similar situation, isn't it? From what we heard from the initial meeting where they've been out all night, they've caught nothing, Jesus tells them to put it in and then they've got so much food they don't know what to do with it. Jesus took them almost full circle, didn't he? He met them in the same kind of situation to restore, to heal, to bring them back into a place where they were to be recommissioned, to be sent out again back into the harvest field. Sometimes, remember I said at the beginning, it's not the, it's not the brand new nets that need the restoring and the mending. It's the used ones. It's the ones that have been around the circuits a few times. It's the ones that have tried and tried and tried and tried and failed and failed and failed or have caught a good catch one day, but nothing the next day. The ones that have got snagged on the little rocks, the ones that have come up against difficulties. That's what needs to be restored. And in this scenario, in fact, the rest of the passage goes on to speak about how Peter was restored, Jesus restoring Peter and then sending them out again saying, follow me, like fo follow you, follow you where? He was ascended to heaven the next few days. But it's more than just a following, following around and patterning ourselves after what he did. It's about this relationship with him one-to-one, -one. but that also encompasses these relationships all about us. Peter decided, I'm going back to the fishing. <laughs> well, this isn't really working. I may as well go and do what I know to do. <laughs> I'm going back to the fishing. And what I love is that the disciples, the other guys go, I'm coming too. <laughs> you know, if that isn't just a, a beautiful picture of network, I don't know what is. Like you go, right, I'm going to try this. 
and everyone's you know what we'll go with you <laughs> we, we're going to support you in that we're going to come along we're going to be a part of what you're up to and vice versa you know maybe if um if Matthew said oh, I'm going back to the tax collecting maybe they wouldn't be quite so quick to go and start counting beans but this support network is like we're not going to cast you off or distance ourselves from you because you want to go back to something that's comfortable because you want to go back to something that is familiar but we're going to go with you because the relationship is so important so the disciples they decide to go back with him and Jesus restores them all back in the same context, in the same situation, by taking them back to this place where they're experiencing again his abundance, experiencing again how much he wants to bless and bless and bless. And sometimes I think we all need these moments of refreshing, these times where we come back and just be awestruck, really, with who Jesus is with what he does for us, how he can bless us so much, and how he actually does want a relationship with us one-on-one -on -one in the context of these relationships with each other. It's about family, it's about being together. It was all done in the context of this network. We need this network to make the network. Network, it isn't about handing out our cards and, you know, getting, getting our name known and getting on the circuits and getting on, you know, it's not about me getting invited by Bob and Mary to come on today to talk about you, but it's about being about what Jesus is about, which is catching the harvest. And we can all be a part of that. Some of us might be called just to be menders of these nets to go around to be the ones who are involved with the healing, the restoring, the bringing together of the body. They're kind of mediators, if you like, or restoring relationship. In my own church here on the Isle of Lewis, New Wine, um, we've called this year the year of reconciliation. That the Lord was reconciling us all in Christ. And he's still in that business of reconciliation. He wants us to be taking the word of reconciliation wherever we go. Be reconciled. That means be brought back, be put back into relationship, this place of peace with Jesus, with the Lord. And our Father, he wants all hands to the deck. He wants us all involved. And it's a privilege to be involved with that to be fishers of men that it's not and how everything's so valuable to him our little parts that we have to play are so valuable because if there's a tiny hole in the net it widens it's a place that it snags where we're missing is a place of vulnerability for the body but what a marvelous thing it is when the body comes together in unity, just like Ephesians chapter four. What a blessing. Thank you, Kirsty. Well lovely. done. Thank you. <laughs> that was so encouraging. And yeah, as you good. say, um, the, the mending indeed. nets and the casting nets, I feel is a word in season at the yeah. moment, the Lord's doing. Um, yeah. I really appreciate that. Um, mm. Now, I know we, you, we're gonna ask you to, to just wrap in prayer of those words that you've spoken it'll have to be brief though in terms of time but it's been so great hearing um what you've had to say today and i feel very encouraged and i've been chatting away uh highlights of your words in the facebook live stream even as you've been speaking and we've... oh cool <laughs> um, so god, god bless you kirsty we're yeah, just gonna um sing a final song i just want to speak the name of jesus as we as we finish and then if you can <clears throat> wrap in prayer for us, Kirsty, that would be so great and um, to, for you to do that. Um, so we'll stay on gallery and be a be a choir together on the worship <laughs> team yes. here. Yes, good. Um, but 
I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. Every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus from the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. So Father, I want to thank you for the way that you are equipping us the way that you've brought us together, that you've put us into relationship with one another. I want to pray for those who need mending, who need restoring, who need healing. Father, I pray that you'd release the healers, that you'd release the restorers, that you would release the people in your body to come into these places of relationship, to bring your healing oil, to bring your anointing, to bring that restoration. Father, I pray for those equippers. I pray that they would be strengthened and encouraged, that you would place people where you need them, where you want them, and that you would enable them to speak your words, yeah. to bring your will, and to be those reconcilers that you've called them to be. Yeah. Father, I pray that your church, that we would have our hearts wide open to ministry, to mm. be poured into and to pour out into one another especially those well-used nets, those pastors, those ministers, those people who have been involved in your ministry, in your work. Father, I pray that you'd equip us, that you'd help us to minister into their lives, mm. to bring encouragement, mm. to build them up. Father, I thank you for strong relationships that you are building together, that you are restoring and that you're equipping us with. And Father, I thank you for the great harvest yeah. and the catch that you are bringing in. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you for this network 
the network that only you can build, the network that you bring together. Mm. Laura, thank you that that network, your kingdom that you are building, that network is what makes the network. So we give you all the praise and the glory, mm. all the honor for it in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, um, you need to unmute Ben and Rachel as well. If, let's just say, um, uh, God bless you. Prayer for everyone as we as we go. It's been great to have you, Kirsty, with us today, yes. sharing from up in Scotland on the Isle of Lewis. And um, we wish you well too for your upcoming wedding in Thank August. You. So we'll yeah, be praying definitely. for you. Bless you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, um, and let's um, just pray a blessing. And Lord God, just yeah. bless bless all those watching today. Yeah. Yes, and, uh, bless you. I mean, encourage whether they're watching live or later on on the YouTube recording. If you want to be in contact with us during the week, um, uh, our contact details are bobbain at hotmail.co.uk. That's B-O-B-B-A-I-N at hotmail.co.uk. We'll be with you again on Bright River Chapel next um, Sunday, 2nd of, 3rd of July. And, uh, we will be having with us our daughter Abigail. So anyway, she might be a bit shy to come off, but I'm going to have her over the weekend. So bye bye everyone. Say bye bye. God bless everyone. you. Bye bye. <laughs>